What's good everyone? Hope everyone's doing well, staying safe. This is Erden and we are back with another Learn with Erden episode. I uh, hope everyone's doing well. I just wanted to say first of all, apologize for lack of video for the past week and a half. My full-time job actually starting to catch up to me. Uh, definitely a whole lot of stuff going on there. So I didn't really have a whole lot of time to actually record any live cops. Uh, but I do wanted to share some of the things with you guys again. So we're going to start another episode of Learn with Erden. All right, so I've gotten quite a few comments and questions about, you know, different sites, whether it's foot sites, Supreme, Shopify. So I want to start a new series that discuss four major categories of botting. And I want to break them down in each individual video. So that way you guys will have more detailed, thorough explanations of some of the things that goes behind botting for each of the sites. There are a total of five uh, major categories that people bought. Uh, number one, Shopify. Number two, Easy Supply or Adidas. Number three, Nike Sneakers. Number four, Foot Sites. And number five, Supreme. So these are the five major categories people go over. Today, we're actually gonna focus on Foot Sites. As you can see, I do have a decent success when it comes to Foot Site buying. So uh, I hope you guys will understand that I'm not just you guys and giving you guys uh, kind of those generic crap. I'm actually giving you some inside look on how it actually be successful when it comes to foot site body. Now with foot sites, uh, one of the main things if you've done trying to manually cop on foot sites, you will know the difficulty of it when uh, you're constantly trying to add the item you want to cart and then they just keep telling you it's out of stock where there's error and then you just keep gonna keep trying, keep trying, keep trying until you add it successfully to cart and then get into the checkout page. And then you face with the fact that you potentially get your order canceled. So this whole process has been done automatically with a bot, right? When a bot does it, it will just try to add uh, the item that you want to cart constantly at a higher frequency. That way you have a higher chance of successfully adding the item you want to your cart and then it leads to a checkout page where you have your uh, profile information already set up and then it will automatically fill it in and then get a checkout. So speed is imperative when it comes to foot sites. So one of the key items that you need to be mindful of is proxies. So what exactly is proxies? Um, I am not a subject matter expert at this, but I'm gonna try to break it down to you guys as simple as you can, especially for the beginning botters. Uh, hopefully you guys will understand some of the intricacies that goes in there. So with proxies, what a proxy does is actually mask your local IP address. So when you're actually trying to access different sites, and in our case, foot sites, um, you're not using a local IP address to send in massive amount of requests to the foot size servers and then send off a warning from foot size saying like, oh, this IP address is not a human activity IP address. So we're gonna flag it or ban it, right? You wanna have proxies in place to mask your own local IP address. So that way um, you have a ton of different IP addresses ready for you guys to actually bot foot sites. And then there are two different types of proxies. There are the residential proxies which uh, like the name it sounds, is just mimicking actual residential homes IP addresses. So that way it will seem more authentic to the foot site servers. And the only drawback with that is that it will be a little slower, uh, similar to your own local IP internet speed. There's also the data center proxies, uh, which is proxies that are coming from a data center that is in different locations. The major locations right now are in Virginia, California, Chicago, New York. These are the, some of the locations where their data centers has been housed. Um, these proxies will be significantly faster than your own local IP address as well as your residential proxies. However, these proxies will have a higher chance of getting banned because the speed it contains, right? So if you imagine the foot size servers or Shopify servers when they're getting massive amounts of requests, and then they see IP addresses that are coming in at a significantly faster speed, they will know that is not something that normal buyer or normal customer will have. So they will know this is possibly a bot. So that's why it is very, very important for you to realize the difference between the two and make that determination on what's best for each different sites. Another difference between residential and data proxies is that residential proxies usually come in with a package that has a data limitation. So usually they're in packages with like two gigabyte, four gigabyte, five gigabytes. Uh, so that way um, you will have a cap on how much data you can generate from your, each of your proxies. Uh, so you use more frequently on residential proxies 
you may run out of data. When that happens, you may not have enough data to actually bought the rest of the sites that you need with the residential proxies. With data center proxies, you won't have a cap, you won't have a data limitation. The only thing is you're buying kind of a monthly service uh, at different frequencies. So for example, you're buying monthly or quarterly proxies throughout data centers, then um, by the time it will expire and then you will have to renew it ahead of time to make sure you keep the same IP addresses for the same set of proxies. So that's something you need to be mindful of as well. So like I said earlier with first site, speed is more imperative than anything that's where DC proxies will be your best bet in order for you to be successful at copy. And there's so many different providers so you have to do your research on which proxy works best for you, for your bot, and for your server. And speaking of server, this is the second part that is related to speed. Like I said, with your local IP address, obviously your internet might have limitations when it comes to speed because you have to spend a lot more money to get higher speed and bandwidth. And that is a problem that you can solve by servers. There are different types of servers. The main one I'm going to talk about is the dedicated servers uh, where you will actually purchase a server from different providers. I use 10x servers where I'll buy servers on a monthly basis and the server will be dedicated to me. I'll get an IP address and that will be the dedicated server that I will use where I will log on using remote desktop functions on my PC to log into a different virtual machine where it will have a better RAM capacity, better CPU, better internet speed where I can download my bots on that remote desktop and then run my tasks from there. And that combined with my DC proxies will give me a higher speed than me on my local machine with my local IP address trying to manually click adding to cart on foot sites. So that is the main thing with foot sites, you wanna have speed. Uh, so I introduced server, I introduced the two different type of proxies. So with that being said, the next part is actually setting up your profiles and then generating cookies and preventing yourself getting canceled. So one of the things back in the day when you required a bot full size to actually generate cookies on your own, and now with most bots that have like cookie servers that will provide the users with cookies during initial drops and restocks, you may not necessarily have to generate cookies on your own. But with some bots, you still require to generate cookies, and a lot of people are asking like, how many cookies do I need for each task? Uh, generally speaking, I believe you want around five proxies per task. Per site so that means that if you want to have like 10 to 12 tasks for foot locker itself uh, that means you probably need to have around like 60 cookies for that foot locker task set people may ask like how long do the cookies last when you generate cookies I am not sure I've been getting a mix of information on how long these cookies last but to my knowledge most likely the cookies from foot sites last a longer period than easy supply and Nike sneakers. So it is best for you if you need to generate cookies on your own for your bots to generate cookies around two days in advance and generate as much as you can for each of the sites. That is your best option. You know, don't set a limit thinking like I generate enough, I'm good. If you have DC proxies you can generate cookies with that don't have data limitations, generate as much as you can. And then that way you won't have the problem of running out of cookies when you're actually trying to bot foot sites during initial releases or restocks. So, and then the next question is, how many proxies do I need for each task? What's the task to proxy ratio? So let me break it down to you in a math equation. I'm gonna use the example of the most recent drop with Kobe 5 Zebras, the Marta Rosen Peas. Uh, since it's only dropped on Foot Locker uh, when it comes to foot sites, I ran 200 tasks on Cyber alone. With 200 tasks, I should have 200 proxies. And not 200 lists of proxies, 200 proxies. I do not have 200 DC proxies. So when that happens, I have to fill in the proxies with residential proxies. The way I set it up is I have 200 tasks on Foot Locker. I have 200 proxies ready in two different groups. Uh, one group is DC proxies, one group is residential proxies. I think I have one group with 50 DC proxies and then I have 150 to 200 residential proxies in another group. And then when I assign the proxies to the tasks I'm running, I spread them out evenly. But the short answer is you want to have one to one ratio when it comes to tasks and proxies. That is the bare minimum. If you can have one to two ratio, one task to two proxies, that's even better. Because you want to be prepared in case foot sites start banning your proxies. And some people may be asking like, you just talked about you know, speed is imperative for foot sites, why are you using residential proxies? Obviously, I want to have a higher chance of getting the shoe. It would be financially impossible for me to get all DC proxies. With that being said, 
I have to have residential proxies in place to replace some of the tasks I'm running because I don't have enough. And sometimes, to be honest, the residential proxies hit. And if you're running residential proxies on a server, the speed is actually relatively not bad. So just something to be mindful of, all right? And the last thing I wanna talk about is this cancellations from foot sites. The most dreaded terms that you can hear about foot site drops is payment verifications. When you get an email saying like, we apologize, we cannot verify your payments, therefore we have to cancel your order. This is the new payment processing system foot sites have been implemented uh, called Aiden. And um, they're constantly monitoring different orders that come in and cancel orders that they feel like are fraudulent. And uh, payment verification process or PV is their way of canceling orders they think are fraudulent or coming from bots. So one of the key things you need to be mindful of is to have enough credit cards spread out across your task. You do not want to have one to two credit cards running 20 different tasks. That way it will easily get your credit card banned, possibly your profile banned. So that's something that you need to be mindful of. Number one is to have enough credit cards. And to have more credit cards, uh, there are the VCCs or virtual credit cards you can have. A few different providers that does it. Uh, privacy is one of the number one providers. Uh, there's Revolut uh, that definitely provide decent amount of VCC options for you. Uh, and lastly, they have Capital One and CD uh, credit cards where they have virtual credit card functionalities built in with their credit cards. So you can definitely look into that as well. I'm not going to go into too much detail on that just yet. Uh, I will do a separate video on VCCs if you guys do want to. So leave in the comment section below if you want to see that video. Hopefully that will give you guys more credit cards to use during first side releases. And the second thing you need to be mindful of is actually jigging your profiles. Now obviously, if you have the same shipping address for all your different profiles, foot size is gonna flag that address immediately. They will see I have 10 orders sending into the same address. That is something wrong because we're limiting one per person. And that requires you to actually jig your profiles. Um, how to jig your profiles? I'm not certain. I'm not a full expert on this because I still get a ton of cancellations. You see, I got around 20 biohacks in the back. I actually caught 35 checkouts during my last video. So you can see I got like 10, 15 cancellations actually from foot sites alone. That is something that I'm not fully an expert on. Some of the tips that I learned is that I do tend to add a few characters in front of my addresses on line one. And a lot of times I'll add like apartment one, apartment two, room one, room two on the second line of my address because I live in a house. If you live in apartment units, if you live in condominiums, obviously don't do that because you do not want your package sent to different apartments or different condos. So um, definitely be mindful of that. If you live in a house, uh, that is something that UPS, USPS tend to ignore. With that being said, I just wanted to say that these are some of the tips to increase your chance of copying at foot sites. I cannot 100% guarantee you to cop successfully on foot sites. I want to, but even for me, I'm not gonna be saying that I have 100% success rate on all the foot site drops. So just something to be mindful of. Definitely this is giving you tips and tricks to increase your chance of copying with foot site botting. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And also I just wanna say a lot of these tips and tricks I'll be sharing also are housed at Essential by Said and Essential CN and some of it even at Reseller Apprentice. And uh, I have the opportunity to announce that we're actually doing a restock for Essential CN and Essential by Said. And one thing to be mindful of for you guys is that these cook groups are actually for people who are more intermediate or somewhat expert at botting. They already own a few bots and they just wanted to have additional edge, additional tips and tricks that they need to push them over the edge to become a better botter. So that's something to be mindful of. So if you're a beginner botter, I would not recommend Essential by Said or Essential CN for you to be your first cook group to join because we have reseller printers, the sister group for Essentials that actually is dedicated to beginner botters. And once that cook group is having a restock, I'll definitely announce it as well, all right? So again, we will have a limited restock for Essential by Said and Essential CN for botters who are just wanting to have that additional edge to them to actually get better at botting. And if you do want to purchase that, Cook group membership. I have the links down in my comment section below so you guys can check it out. All right. So, with that being said, hopefully, you guys enjoyed this week's Learn with Erden. And uh, please leave in the comment section below which category you want to see next and uh, one with the most comments. I'll definitely do one in the next video. All right. So, thank you guys for watching. Now, let's get to the unboxing.
Hey guys, all right, so uh, let's do some unboxing. So as you can see, we got a ton of shipments for the past two weeks. So I want to show you all the things that came in. Um, first thing first, we got to take a look at these biohacks. Holy crap, are these beautiful. Like with all these bright colors in the inside with the pink and the orange and the teal and with this like neon green on the soles and then the nice suede, the darker suede and then the leather. Oh my God, this is just, it's beautiful. I can't keep my hands off of it. Like, come on, man. Like, I really love this shoe. I don't know, some people are having some difference of opinions with these, but in my opinion, these are really, really pretty. And I'm glad I was able to cop, I think. I think so far right now, I'm gonna have like around like 20. I actually sold a couple already, shipped out, so. Um, but yeah, these are really nice. I got some in the bigger sizes. Might keep one for myself, and I got a bunch of GS sizes, so definitely a very good cop for me. We got four of these uh, 700s, and then one of them is already sold, so we got a total of five. Surprisingly undefeated, my first time actually copying on undefeated via bot. All four of them got shipped, and um, I really like these. I missed out on the uh, azaleas, is that what they call it? I missed out on the azaleas, and then I was able to cop one of the Alvas for myself, and this is the Arzurath, and I really like it. Um, I, I gotta be honest, I like all the shoes I cop, but I cannot physically keep all of them, and my wife will not allow me to keep all of them, so that's a sad fact. But um, yeah, I really like these. Um, very interesting looking colorway, I would say. The blues on the outside is a uh, very good contrast with the white uh, also, and it's really pretty. Like, I really like these. I think. Uh, people think these are uh, way too colorful, but I don't think so at all. I think these are actually really nice. I actually saw one guy wearing this um, at a Chinese market. Um, he was wearing this with a Supreme um, Feral Sanders tee actually. So uh, pretty interesting and uh, shout out to him. He was able to pull it off. And then this is the Easy Quantum lifestyle that was released back in February in Chicago. Um, I've been wanting this pair of shoes for a long time now. And shout out to Kodai, I was able to cop a size 11. Um, now that I have it in hand, and my wife's sitting right there, I don't know if I'm actually gonna keep this. But this is still really nice. Like comparing this to the barium, I gotta say this is definitely better than the barium, which is, which is why the resell for this is a lot better than the barium as well. But I'm gonna have to sell this. I don't think I can keep all these shoes in my collection because the next shoe I'm gonna show you is definitely gonna stay in my collection. Let's see what it is. Now this, this is the best shoe I've caught this year so far, I gotta say, bar none. This is the Union Jordan 4 black colorway, and I'm very excited to open it up the first time with you guys. You ready? Oh, oh God. Oh, this is so pretty. Oh my. God, look at it. Oh my goodness. Cookie, you want these? You see how good this is? Look at it. I, I know I know people have been hating on these because the tongues are you know smaller uh, by comparison in comparison to the hold on one second. So I know I know people have been saying like okay the Jordan Force tongues this is actually one of the most iconic looking part of the shoe, and then you can see on these Jordan Force the tongues actually stick out. Um, so this is why people have been hating on this pair when when the tongue is actually smaller is actually in. But if you look inside here, they're actually stitchings uh, of the tongue, and I've seen people on YouTube where they actually cut out the stitchings and the tongue will actually flip up. And uh, I'm gonna actually do that because that's that's the iconic look that I want to have with the Jordan Fours when I actually put these on my toes. You know the yellow also they want to keep it similar to Jordan Ones when it's like have the antique look and uh, they wanted to combine all the classic colorways of the Jordan Force into one shoe. You know, the Royals, the red, and the black, and the white. Um, I gotta say, man, they knocked this out of the park. I know people have been hating on this ever since these first came out with a preview look. Same with the Guava colorway, but I have not hear a single person who reviewed this pair of shoes when they got it in hand saying they hate this. So. That's all the shoes we have for you guys this week. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys do like my video, don't forget to hit give me that thumbs up and like the video. 
And if you have not done so, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and notification bell for us, all right? And uh, thank you guys so much for your support. We already broke 700 and we're very close to that 1,000 subscriber goal. So uh, you guys are the best. Thank you guys so much. In the meantime, keep it cool, keep it real. This is Erdin. Peace out.